How you doing, gentlemen? What's going on? It's me, Truck, again. What's happening? Uh, today, I'm making a video about this one particular topic. is uh, the ATM machine. Um, withdrawing money from the ATM machine. You know, most of us, you know, we when we go out, you know, we use plastic most of the time, using, you know, using your credit card. But oftentimes, um, some places that we go to, you might be on a date or taking the wife out or hanging out with the fellas and their card machine might be down or the bar's card machine, whatever you're going to do might be down. So, of course, you know, we have to go get some cash. We have to have cash in hand. So, um, I want to talk about my experiences back in the 1980s. And in the 1980s, um, it wasn't an ATM, you know, automatic teller machine. It was actually the Mac machine. So the euphemism called Tap Mac was in play when I was younger, in my 19, 20, 21. And um, it was called, uh, we, we go Tap Mac, money access machine. So when you hear me say Tap Mac, that's what I mean. I mean an ATM. So back in the day, you know, not too many places um, that I used to go to use uh, uh, debit or credit cards, you know, they, it was straight cash. You know, it, that's before all that stuff caught on. So it was one place in Camden, New Jersey, um, on Market Street. It was like right across the street from City Hall that I used to go because uh, it was pretty much the only one available in Camden uh, that was not inside of a bank. Back in the day, most of the ATMs were actually inside of the bank. And um, so you had to actually use it inside the bank when it banking hours. So, but this particular one was actually on the outside of a, a building across the street. I think it was the Parquet building before they knocked it down. Um, and I used to go there. But the problem was, man, every time I went there, you know, there was always some cat um, there begging for money. Now, I have no problem giving people money, spare change, you know, whatever, even feeding people. So, you know, I have a feeding ministry and all that. I help, you know, establish some feeding ministries in, in about four or five churches. You know, but um, but the problem what I had was that some of them dudes that were there, they weren't there really to, uh, you know, to get spare change of, of food. They weren't there even there for drugs. They were there for rob you, and I could tell. Because when I used to pull up, and back then I had a, like a 1981 Cadillac Eldorado. It was a nice car. And when I pulled up, man, them dudes' eyes would light up, and I would get out. But back then I was about 1920, so I didn't carry a gun. But I was a big dude, and I wasn't afraid, you know. I, you know, but uh, I was, I, but I was cautious, you know. So I would get out, I would wait for other people stand in line, and I would, you know. And the thing that always worried me is when I turned my back to actually tap Mac, you know what I'm saying? And because you never know, somebody come up behind you. Let's go old school for a second with one of these, you know, a butterfly knife. You know, or even even more old school. Let's look at one of these things. This is one of my things. One of my dad. My dad used to carry when he before he was a correctional. It was a straight razor. You know what I'm saying? So you know, back in the day, you know, those are the main things. This is even before guns, the proliferation of guns in the hood. You know, because uh, back then, I was actually my threats were mostly through knives. I, uh, I think at that age, I had been probably had a knife to me about three or four times at that point. I can't remember specifically, but, you know, um, so what I want to talk to is preparing for when you do go out mentally before you go out for money. Either you bring enough money. I don't know how much money is good for you when you go out on a date, but I find about a hundred to $200 is sufficient. You know, when you count gas, when you count, um, uh, you know, food, you know, beverages or whatever. That's about $100, $200 tolls if you're traveling. Um, and then what I would suggest also in the area that you're going to is actually find uh, an ATM that's not a walk-in, but a drive-up, a drive through And here's why, okay? So the reason why I say, you know, you want to minimize your... Uh, you want to minimize your exposure when you, you're, you're handling money, you know, and you don't want to expose your body. You don't want to expose uh, what you're doing, you know, all this kind of stuff. 
you know, because Pete, the, the stick up boys, they actually hang around the ATMs. I don't know if you guys know that, but they actually hang around um, the stick, the uh, ATMs and the Mac, well, Mac machines, the ATM, you know. So, what you want to do is you want to find one of those uh, drive ups, you know, and in your area where you live, actually, you know, map it out, find out where they are because you really don't want to expose yourself at night going to get some cash. So, but the reason why you want to get the drive through is simple. When you're in the drive through, um, you, you're not exposed. Say this is a car, right? This is your nice gold Lamborghini, right? So, this is something you want to also practice when you go to the uh, ATM. This is the this is the wall for the ATM, and it's uh, the ATM machine is off to the, the left, right? So, when you pull up to the ATM, pull tight. Right, drive in, pull tight, and then hook your, your car out like that. And the reason why I'm saying doing that is because you do not want somebody to sneak in between you and your car while you're actually hitting in your code to get your money. Um, and this is actually a lot safer than going into some of these. Uh, here we have, what is it, uh, TD Banks and Wachovia where you, you swipe, your, swipe your card and then you actually, it'll let you in the door. But a lot of thieves, what they do, man, is they actually have a old cars they found or they robbed somebody, they use their ATM card. And while you're in there, they'll see you in there and they'll swipe the car. Wham. And they'll get it right behind you while you're trying to get your money. Now, if you have a pistol and all that, you know, of course, you want to be aware of your surroundings uh, and you don't want to... Um, you don't even want to go in if you see people just hanging around. Or, you know, just take a real good look at those parking lots as well. Because a lot of the banks, they have bushes. They have trees around them. Um, they could be watching you from a parking lot across from the park, you know, from a parking lot. They could be watching you from across the street. It's nothing for them to just run over to you, swipe their car, get in there with you where you'll be isolated and you know where to run because you have to push out the door. and You know, it'll slow you down. So that's why I recommend to drive, uh, go through the drive-through, because in the drive-through, you know, if you you put, you work it right, at least you know you don't have to worry about nobody coming up behind you, and of course you can see out the front when you uh, uh, you know you can see out the front if they try to come in through that space, you know you're in a car, you know, <laughs> you know you can even pull a, a number where you just got the foot on the brake if you want, and you just let go, you know, and drive, you know, so. That's what I do. That's actually what I do. I never at night go into or walk into an ATM machine. I know where I'm going. I know where all the drive ups are. I have enough. Normally, I have enough cash on me, but most of the time, uh, if I have to use a, a, a ATM at in the evening, nightfall, I will actually go to a drive through for the simple fact because I know I know guys out there that do stuff like that. And you don't want to do it. All right. Uh, it's good to see you guys. I hope everything is well with you and your family and your job and everything. I, I pray everything's well. And in Jesus' name, I just hope you guys, you know, take in consideration the times that we live in and, you know, consider that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. It's, it's, consider accepting him because he is Lord and he is your Savior. You just have to accept the fact that he is. So, again, once again, peace, gentlemen. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.